a faithless woman, if known to be such by the person concerned, is but faithless, if she is believed faithful, she is treacherous. In the world there are only two ways of raising oneself, either by one's own industry or by the weakness of others. Life is a tragedy for those who feel, and a comedy for those who think. False modesty is the last refinement of vanity. Tyranny has no need of arts or sciences, for its policy, which is very shallow and without any refinement, only consists in shedding blood. Nothing resembles today so much as tomorrow. A man is rich whose income is larger than his expenses, and he is poor if his expenses are greater than his income. It is a fool's privilege to laugh at an intelligent man. Nothing makes us better understand what trifling things providence thinks he bestows on men in granting them wealth, money, dignities, and other advantages, than the manner in which they are distributed and the kind of men who have the largest share. If poverty is the mother of all crimes, lack of intelligence is their father. There is no excess in the world so commendable as excessive gratitude. Friendship can exist between persons of different sexes, without any coarse or sensual feelings. Yet a woman always looks upon a man as a man, and so a man will look upon a woman as a woman. It is no more in our power to love always than it was not to love at all. Nothing is easier for passion than to overcome reason, but the greatest triumph is to conquer a man's own interests. A man who parades his piety is one who, under an atheist king, would be an atheist. Women are at little trouble to express what they do not feel, but men are still at less to express what they do feel. Among some people arrogance supplies the place of grandeur, inhumanity of decision, and roguery of intelligence. For a long time visits among lovers and professions of love are kept up through habit, after their behavior has plainly proved that love no longer exists. Sudden love takes the longest time to be cured. We should like those whom we love to receive all their happiness, or, if this were impossible, all their unhappiness from our hands. The most accomplished literary work would be reduced to nothing by carping criticism, if the author would listen to all critics and allow everyone to erase the passage which pleases him the least. If life be wretched, it is hard to bear it, if it be happy, it is horrible to lose it. Both come to the same thing. Nothing keeps longer than a middling fortune, and nothing melts away sooner than a large one. It is often easier as well as more advantageous to conform ourselves to other men's opinions than to bring them over to ours. It is weakness which makes us hate an enemy and seek revenge, and it is idleness that pacifies us and causes us to neglect it. To speak and to offend is with some people but one and the same thing. To how many girls has a great beauty been of no other use but to make them expect a large fortune?
There are only two ways by which to rise in this world, either by one's own industry or by the stupidity of others. The same principle leads us to neglect a man of merit that induces us to admire a fool. The true spirit of conversation consists more in bringing out the cleverness of others than in showing a great deal of it yourself. When we lavish our money we rob our air, when we merely save it we rob ourselves. A man must be completely wanting in intelligence if he does not show it when actuated by love, malice, or necessity. The same common sense which makes an author write good things, makes him dread they are not good enough to deserve reading. Profound ignorance makes a man dogmatical. The same amount of pride which makes a man treat haughtily his inferiors, makes him cringe servilely. To those above him, Women become attached to men through the favors they grant them, but men are cured of their love through those same favors. It is fortunate to be of high birth, but it is no less so to be of such character that people do not care to know whether you are or are not. The sweetest music is the sound of the voice of the woman we love. When a woman doesn't take her eyes off a man or takes them away from him all the time, everyone immediately understands what it means. A man who knows how to make good bargains or finds his money increase in his coffers, thinks presently that he has a good deal of brains and is almost fit to be a statesman. To bewail the loss of a person we love is a happiness compared with the necessity of living with one we hate. A great mind is above insults, injustice, grief, and raillery, and would be invulnerable were it not open to compassion. There are few wives so perfect as not to give their husbands at least once a day good reason to repent of ever having married or at least of envying those who are unmarried.